Hey guys, welcome to Excalibur Mining, and I have a fun little project today. Uh, this is the world's um, most powerful FPGA ever made um, by, Squirrel, by Squirrel Research. And um, what we're going to do today is we have a little developer board or uh, PCI board that uh, they sell as well. And we have a little bit of a, a water cooling project to see uh, what sort of hash rate we can improve or get out of this little guy. So as you can see we have quite a few components here and if it works I have about six others that I want to do in series and see if we can uh, you know, make the entire thing uh, more efficient. But um, it's also an experiment just to see you know if we can. So I'll go ahead and also list the uh, the equipment I have here and like I said this is a research project so you know if you break a water line and and wipe out your your mining rig then that's that's up to you but I just wanted to show you my results and and what's possible to do so first up we want to go ahead and uh, disassemble and void all the warranties with this uh, this miner um, we do have the extra heat sink that um, is recommended for the VRM which is the chip that gets hot but this just you know cools it down enough to to make it maybe 20 percent more efficient um, there are better methods you know um, air might be a way to go but we're gonna try water cooling always wanted to and then we're gonna remove this a fan in the shroud and such so as you can see we've taken off the four screws that are along the side and also we we took this uh, we took this heat sink off and now we can very gently, very carefully uh, wiggle this guy up and uh, see that we're going to have to disconnect it from the where the fan plugs in. So as you can see, there's two additional screws that are holding the cooler onto the FPGA itself. So here is the acorn and um, it is not a pleasant thing to get apart. So as you can see, um, we have the, the copper heat sink and such off of the actual FPGA. Um, you can actually get it like a, um, a plastic separator or something underneath here. I wouldn't use anything sharp. You don't want to break anything. But the, and you need to do this at your own risk, but um, I actually had a uh, user uh, give me a recommendation to put this in the freezer for two hours. So again, this is at your own risk, but um, I put it in the freezer for two hours and then I was able to take this and you want to hold on, of course, to the um, both boards here and you can actually, I twisted it off and it was easy enough for me. I might have damaged it, I don't know. And of course you could possibly damage yours, but um, that is the easiest method that I've found to uh, remove that heat sink. So finally got all of the thermal paste off of the uh, FPGA there. And I think we're about ready to go. Um, you clean it the way that uh, you see fit. I um, I saw recommendations about 99% isopropyl alcohol. But of course you don't want to scratch things or break things or, you know, uh, damage it that way. So now we'll go to looking at how we're going to um, assemble this thing. One note is that with the uh, fan connector it just was able to be pulled out. It's pretty snug so you want to do that carefully. And then also um, there is this block of the thermal um, tape underneath there. So um, this uh, chip here may not need uh, quite as much heat dissipation. Of course, this guy needs some, and then this little um, VRM chip needs it as well. So here we go. So for the water cooling system, I have this uh, AGB, AGP Tech uh, radiator, and then I also picked up a, a Noctuus, and let's see, it's a P12, uh, 1700 RPM fan that's designed to be um, at... Uh, 
interference uh, range as far as it doesn't just blow air across something. It actually, you know, it can be right next to something. So I wanted a compact setup, so we'll see how this guy uh, works together. Um, if it works, if not, I can reuse it somewhere else on a different application. So I went ahead and mounted the fan on the radiator. I'll see if it's the, <laughs> the correct direction I believe it is. I also have a, a power supply that I'll, I'll try to list, but it'll run this and the uh, water pump. But one thing is the radiator doesn't have, it has its own little screw holes. I think they're 4 by 40s um, Your computer screws may work. I just uh, found a couple. Now you don't want to run too long of ones, obviously. You don't want to go in there and damage anything, but it just needs to be held on. It doesn't, um, you know, it's not really going to go anywhere, but you want to make sure and have the contact there. So the next step is we'll take the uh, <clears throat> the PCI riser and I will mount the, um, the FPGA, the, what's left of the acorn, um, onto that. And then I will uh, see about uh, getting this installed in a way that um, you know, we could actually use it. Um, we want to be able to cover the VRM chip and, um, of course, the FPGA in a proper way. The other concern here is that uh, there's a height differential, so we're going to have to, you know, use some copper shims to take care of that. So what we have here is uh, just a test run for the pumping system. So we have the, the little pump, um, the fan. Uh, running on the little radiator and then um, of course we'll have more of these but for testing purposes we just have the the one aluminum water block that is going to be shimmed to the FPGA I just want to make sure that it didn't leak and that it uh, operated and functioned coolly so we'll go from there so what we have here now is a naked squirrel we have the VRM chip here that gets super hot and we have to be careful not to put any uh, heat sink on here that's going to, uh, you know, push down on any of these other guys. And of course you have your FPGA here as well that's been, for the most part, cleaned off. So what I've done is, um, you can get these on, um, on Amazon, but there's different size copper heat sinks. And I've actually cut this one uh, corner out of this and then also um, smoothed it out. Because you don't want, obviously, any rough edges or that sort of thing if you're going to compress it. And then we're going to put the water block on top of it. So when it's done, we'll have this uh, sandwiched um, uh, here to bring it up to the, the level of the FPGA, the, the base of the, the chip here. And then we'll put another one on top of there. So that way it's all one level. Okay, and so I have my assistant here and we have this really high-tech solution to hold on the water block. So show us what you have. So we're going to use this clamp to hold the water block. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll see how that works. So now you can see that the uh, copper heat sinks have been placed, and um, like I said, this is experimental, so we'll see what happens, but uh, we'll, we'll put on the water block and go from there. So this is experimental, of course, and it's not a finished product, but we have water cooling uh, being sent to the FPGA. It's not mining currently. We're going to log into Windows and see just what um, the heat and everything looks like. Uh, the graphics cards are offline, but we just have this one acorn sitting here uh, being water cooled. So again, this is not a real pretty setup, but as you can see, we have that cooler um, sandwiched on there. It's not permanent. There's other methods that I could use for that, but um, there's a good copper heat sink and good thermal paste. Uh, all sandwiched at the you know correct levels underneath there um, we come around and I, uh, the pump and of course you want to make sure that it's going to your cooler water water block and then you know bringing the hot water back to your fan um, we could probably set up multiples of these and I may do that on a different rig like I said this is just experimental to see if we blow it up or not for the sake of science So as you can see here, I hope um, we have this singular 215 plus and it is mining along. Um, our core is stable. I have it at 235 over 235 and our VRAM is actually uh, cooler. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, send the instruction to um, 
increase the mining by five and just see where where we can get with this thing so typically with the stock cooler and the um, a heat sink on it you can get around 280 um, 275 290 just depends on the day and the the cooler um, they, they they can vary a little bit so we're gonna go ahead and bump this up to 260 um, I'm gonna try a few different uh, settings and then I will I will be back so as you can see we're up to um, not much change on our core or VRM temperature but we're up to 300 which typically you know you're getting into the mid 80s in temperature so we're gonna go ahead and boost this by several clock speeds and just kind of see where we can hit the sweet spot where it's still safe and stable but you know, um, not going to be overheating on us. So here you can see we are pushing 405 on the clock and we're pretty stable with uh, 56 degrees on the VRM chip. Like I said, around 80 or 90, she starts to run pretty hot and you can have failures and you don't want to do that long term from my understanding, but um, right now we're we're pushing it up to, to about 405. I'll see what that does poolside, and we all might go just a little bit further and just kind of see where, where our failure curve is going to be. So I think we've pushed it to its max limit. Um, you know, as far as temperature, it's fine at 400. Um, but if you look here, we can push it up to uh, the clock up to 410. But we have uh, and starting to get invalid shares at 410. So, you know, our temperature is still 60, which is, you know, fine. But I think we're just, you know, pushing the, pushing the little acorn a little further than it should. So at 405, it seems to, on this particular one, level off and uh, just do a really good job. So, you know, I don't think it's a cooling issue at that point. Um, which is fine. I mean, it only can be capable of so much, but it looks like about 400 to 405 uh, mega hashes per second uh, with a very cool uh, 31 and 57, 58 degrees Celsius for the VRM. So, um, you know, maybe you have the parts laying around and you can, you know, spend the Saturday water blocking your acorns or, um, you know, maybe <laughs> it's uh, not something you want to attempt but either way this just shows sort of the the max possibility with the, the 215 so I hope you liked this video um, I plan on doing more experimental and uh, such stuff so if you guys have any ideas on things that you want to see done or have questions about um, feel free to contact me in, in the discord or put comments down below uh, like I say, I appreciate everybody, and we look forward to doing some more experiments together. So one question I always had was, you know, if you're mining with your miner, and I have five cards because I only have a six-card motherboard, um, you can see that five GPUs are mining Beam successfully there. Um, if we run over here and we open up the Acorn miner, um, will it be able to run simultaneously? Now I know that it's supposed to support um, running in parallel because it's going to be supporting your GPUs. However, um, if it's mining as a separate function, will that actually work? And you have to forgive me, I've kind of remoted into the other box here. So um, it looks as though it's up to 250 and not having any issues, um, still being water cooled. And we can go ahead and close this guy. And I'll look over here. So I'm still seeing, you know, pretty good uh, souls per second on the P104s. And we'll go ahead and boost. 
our uh, clocks up by a substantial amount on the acorn and see if it interferes at all. I assume it's using a different lane, but I said I don't have any hard evidence that it wouldn't interfere. So we'll go ahead and run this up to its maximum, which has been stable around 400, which seems absolutely ridiculous, but also uh, wonderful. So um, that's mining at 405, and if we look over here at our GPUs, um, I'm going to make sure and grab another share before I call it. So it looks like uh, those are doing perfectly well um, using the correct wattage of electricity, getting the right souls per second, and the 215 is sitting in the background mining as well. So um, just in case you had a question, if you can mix these two miners at the same time, obviously a lot of miners don't like to <laughs> compete, but um, these are not using the same resources from what I can tell with five GPUs and one acorn. So your results may vary, but that may answer a few questions for some people. So just to wrap this up, the experiment seems to be working. You know, the VRM is 59 degrees, which is about the coolest it's ever been, and it's doing 405 mega hashes per second. Um, you can uh, mine with the acorns and your GPUs and not cause necessarily any uh, issues. How far that goes, I don't know. It looks like you can can break them out and because they don't use very much wattage and they're not interfering with the other miners. So there is that. Um, on Discord, there is uh, a group for Squirrel and FPGAs and um, I got a credit <clears throat> to Justin JJA. Um, he is the one that, you know, initially showed how this could be done with <clears throat> water cooling and um, you know getting those hash rates so uh, it's an idea that he had and uh, proved that it worked and um, I just wanted to confirm it and then I'm gonna go from here and probably build out uh, <laughs> a rig with my remaining squirrels and just you know with the acorns CLE 215 pluses and 215s the 101s don't seem to do uh, what they need to do here uh, and probably not worth it but again, you're going to be voiding your warranty and uh, holding the um, water block on the FPGA is going to be sort of a thing that needs to be engineered properly. Um, but, you know, if you can parallel mine CKB or Varus or something that comes up, uh, it might be actually worth putting them to work and uh, letting them letting them do their job in 2020. So uh, with that, I'll go ahead and wrap it up and thank you guys for watching.